Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Rolge and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's a fun show where we dive deeper into FTC robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 12611, Tech Nova coming in from Bellevue, Washington. 12611 is off to a great start this year, competing at the Washington Spencer League Meet. Uh, league Meet number one going 6-0 and with an OPR of 141.7 and, had an, and they have an impressive machine that we cannot wait to show off. Last year, by the way, they were ranked second in Washington State, got the number two Inspire, and this team is consistent winners of the Control Award. And joining me today from team number 12611 is going to be Kevin, Letienne, and Nishant. And we're going to be giving you a full tour of this robot, possibly some future iterations, who knows. But can't wait to show off this awesome scoring machine, all here coming up on Behind the Bot. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Fun is gearing up for the 2022 season and is looking for advertising partners that would be a great fit for our fans and also make it possible to keep us creating great content. If you're interested in your company or brand reaching over 100,000 unique individuals who are actively engaged in FIRST for either recruitment, brand positioning, or product engagement, go to firstupdatesnow.com forward slash info or reach out to us at admin at firstupdatesnow.com for our advertising partnership deck and let's get your brand started on First Updates Now. So Kevin, we're going to be doing a full feature of this robot here, uh, but start us out uh, with what you're most interested in. I know we're going to be going through the outline of the robot and components, going into the drive train, but what do you want to start us out with here? Uh, I'll just give a general outline first with our robot and go over all of the components. So we have a drive train, that's our base of the robot. We have the intake, we have the bucket, we have the vertical slide, the horizontal slide, and that's all of our main a uh, cycle type uh, mechanism. We also have the flywheel and tapping arm in addition to those. So uh, I'll start off on the drivetrain. So our drivetrain is actually a very narrow design. It's less than 13 inches, meaning that we can fit through the gap very comfortably, which is very convenient during all phases of the competition. And uh, uh, a special feature of this drivetrain is actually these idler wheels. So these let us just like scrape along the walls very smoothly, which is very helpful during all portions of the competition because we don't have to very carefully anymore. It can't just be more free-flowing. And also another little small caveat I would like to share with you guys is this one-way door here. So what happens is that oftentimes things can get stuck in the central portion of the robot. So and that will incur a lot of penalties, which is uh, something that we definitely want to avoid. So this one-way door lets us to essentially just drive forwards and the block will get spit out on its own which is very helpful when trying to mitigate the risk of penalties. And uh, we have went through many, many mo uh, iterations of this drivetrain. So for example, we have tested tank bots, we have tested uh, different motor configurations, but this just turns out to be the most uh, well-rounded and uh, the most optimal design. I can ask you real quick, uh, can you talk more about the one-way door from a design perspective? Uh, when you were looking at creating that, was that something you're like immediate, like, yes, we think this is going to happen? Or what part of the process did that door actually come into play? Well, it actually came in after the first league event. So I actually got two games, I believe, which we incurred multiple minor penalties because we couldn't get the blocks out fast enough. So we definitely want to fix that going forward and just avoid that altogether. And then last thing I just want to ask you before we move on to is on the 13 inch design. So we're seeing, you know, a lot of teams uh, have gone that route, but obviously you sacrifice, you know, part of your packaging for doing that. So when you were looking at this game challenge, was that a pretty immediate decision or how did you come to the decision to stick to the 13 inch wide? Um, that actually came in after we tested multiple drive strain iterations. For example, at the start, we thought we might be able to just get a tank ball and drive through the barrier, but it turns out that's very slow and uh, inefficient. So I guess this is essentially the culmination of us testing multiple potential solutions and realizing that just avoiding the barriers altogether is the most, it's the smartest path forward. We do have ideas for how to avoid, um, like, and make, we have ideas on how to make going over the barriers uh, easier. We'll, you'll probably see that in uh, leak two, um, but... Yeah. Is there anything you want to tell us about that before uh, before we see that, or are you just going to tease us a little bit there? 
What do you think? We'll, we'll just tease it. All yeah. right, for sure. All right, well, what do you have next on your bot? Uh, on this show, I'll actually go over the intake with you guys. So let me so let's rotate the bot real quick to make it more convenient. All right, I'll hand it off to you. Okay, so our intake has two main features. There are these noodles, and there are these side funnel wheels. So originally, we only had these noodles. However, we found that we had to line up with the game objects really precisely. So we added these funnel wheels that allow us to get a much wider range of game objects. This allows us to pick up game objects much faster. Yeah, once it uh, goes through the intake, we go into our bucket. Uh, let me just raise this. Yeah, so it goes up and then out, and then uh, our bucket just prepares here. And then we can just dump it. Uh, I won't dump it, because no, I'll just do it slowly-ish. There's a shortcut for that, but um, yeah. So, so that allows us to move out and back in really quickly. This is uh, two uh, slides, so actually four slides total. So two slides going up and then two slides going out. Stop that and we can control this. Um, and yeah, so this thing, uh, it has stability issues, but uh, to fix that, we have these two spools. Uh, this is all connected uh, by shafts, so there are spools on both sides uh, that control this. Uh, so it goes up in sync. We have many plates, like just crossbars, just connecting everything over together just to try to keep it stable. Um, and yeah, right. We also have this uh, two sensors. We have a weight sensor on the in the bucket. This uh, a lot, this lets uh, the robot know that there's a heavy object in in here, and then it can uh, use LEDs to uh, tell the uh, driver that uh, we can make use of this. Uh, limited resource and use it at the shared hub. There's also the color sensor, which is uh, more reliable at letting us know when there's something in there and also, yeah. We also have a servo and linkage to drive our horizontal side, and this is more space efficient, which allows us to fit everything into this narrow 13-inch robot. Yeah, so that's pretty much an overview of the cycling or mechanism meant for cycling freight. So our carousel is obviously just a flywheel mounted on a mojo, which is pretty straightforward. And uh, our capping mechanism is actually quite interesting. In fact, we added this after our League One competition. So how this thing works essentially, first of all, with our capstone, it's essentially a very thin and light metallic plate with cloth on it. So this can latch onto the vertical beam of the cent or of the line saw very easily. And uh, on this arm, there's a free hanging beam here with some magnets on the bottom. So what happens during games is that we can lower this arm and then we'll stick to the thin metal plate and then we can just go up. And since it's free hanging, we can make sure that the bottom is always parallel to the ground. So that makes delivery and driving much easier. I don't know if I've seen uh, teams use magnets before. So, what made you come up with uh, with that concept? Uh, looking at uh, you know versus you know we've seen our teams just kind of grasp them because it seems very efficient, uh, and I'm going to assume that it works quite well for you. Yeah. So we actually have experimented with claws before, but they just turn out to be too large to fit like conveniently into our narrow design. And uh, claws also require a lot of precision during tally up and control. So we figured that. It will be more efficient to do something that's, that's idle, but can still work as efficiently and much more space, space optimized. Did you have to do anything in regards to like testing like how strong the magnets are or anything like that? Or was it just there's enough drag or resistance when, you, when you're capping that it's not that big of a deal? Um, yeah, we have to actually tried out multiple, like, multiple stacks of magnets. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can, but... We have the screw that goes through the magnet into the beam. So we can essentially just put on whatever amount of magnet that we need to uh, test this. And we can test um, the most optimal number of magnets quite easily because just one screw through a thread. So We've also tried really, have really strong magnets. Obviously, those don't work since you would drag the hub and topple everything yeah. under. Uh, and really weak magnets, once you just make a slight move on the robot, it will just uh, shake off the capstone. Uh, and make it basically fill that. 
I, I love the concept of this, uh, especially you mentioned with the 13 inch packaging that this fits really nicely for it. So, uh, kudos to you. That's a really cool, unique uh, uh, innovation to uh, what the uh, challenge is. Most of our autonomous points uh, actually come from the warehouse side where we do the preload and then we do three cycles from the warehouse and back and then park there. So, obviously, because we're fitting through that gap, uh, we need like we need to be consistent. We can't allow uh, too much uh, drifting from our localization. So we use three sensors. There's a front one here and a um, side one over here and one on the other side as well. This um, this lets us when we're in the warehouse, we can see the left and front wall or the right wall uh, if it's mirrored um, and completely relocalize the robot um, <clears throat> um, and make it really consistent when coming back. We use uh, drive encoders, uh, which are pretty reliable, but obviously not uh, will still incur uh, drifting, which is why we have sensors. So um, with, with your with going with the 13 inch wide frame, you do have the option to do odometry as well. So uh, why did you end up choosing like encoders versus odometry? What benefits did you see to that? Yes. Yeah, so the robot when we designed the robot, we were thinking. If we just do the gap, then we will have issues where maybe it's blocked. We actually see this a lot in League One. Robots will block us, they're really mean. Um, so we design early with, so we have two inches of clearance on our robot's uh, drivetrain. Um, kind of difficult to see. Uh, but, um, and we didn't want any dragging odometry uh, wheels uh, that could snag on anything. So that was basically out in. And so we had to like start using Roadrunner with the uh, drive encoders. And then from a programming standpoint, uh, what, what programs are you actually using for your programming? Or can you talk a little bit more about how you did the code? Um, yeah, so we use Roadrunner for our trajectories. Um, and we also, I also wrote a, a, the localization code for or the sensors, which uh, uses the angle of the robot and the distance and where the sensor is on the robot to accurately figure out where the robot is. It just needs to see two walls and then it's gold. Uh, as we wrap up here, a question I want to ask you about your league meet. You mentioned you, you saw a lot of defense happening in that. Uh, is there anything else from like playing your first set of matches that you've seen on the field that maybe surprised you or was different or something that other teams should know about that haven't had a chance to play yet? Um, I'm just actually quite personally surprised by the amount of defense that's going on this early in the competition because um, at least in Washington State, point or ranking is made by the amount of points you score and not whether you win or not. So from that perspective, it is quite surprising you see teams just sacrificing like th their ability to score and try to uh, just minimize the amount of points scored by the other side. So that's why we had to make certain adaptations to just make our robot more competitive in this more defensive kind of game flow. Well, 12611 Technova coming in from Bellevue, Washington. Thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us more about uh, your team and your robot. Uh, very versatile robot. I love the, the different mechanisms and features that you've had on there. So we appreciate that. Can't wait to see what future iterations you have. And good luck, of course, for the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on students and graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.